that expertise is, is a critical aspect. I don't know if you know this, but Rackspace has some of the top experts on um, the SharePoint platform. We acquired a company a few years ago that helped us build that expertise. They write books on SharePoint. They speak at conferences. They do meetups. And it cuts across both the, the uh, SharePoint and Exchange business. They're very tied together. So we're very proud of that team and very proud to serve Edelman. Our next guest also uses Rackspace email, uh, also cloud and VMware. Accruent is working to solve for growth for their rapidly growing SaaS business. Uh, the challenge is to quickly improve that infrastructure for the companies that they're acquiring. Um, you know, the, the managed virtualization platform that Rackspace offers on VMware is the solution. And here's a little bit more about Accruent in this video. Accruent is a software company. Uh, we make software for businesses to support their real estate assets. Do you see the agenda? Primarily we're solving for rapid growth. We as a company have been growing by acquisition. That's uh, given us opportunities to expand our platform, expand our customer base, and then also consolidate some of our infrastructure and operations. Growing this way has presented some challenges that we've learned that some of the different companies, depending on where they were at their state, with the level of investment they made in their infrastructure, we've been able to consolidate that and, and improve that and stabilize the operations. As we've been acquiring these companies, that's been one of the things we've been able to solve. One of the aspects of our software solution project management is that we, we become a document repository. And so I have terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of customers' data that not only do I need to make sure that I'm serving up incredibly quickly, but that I'm replicating geographically. So if something were to happen that I've got the, the 60 terabytes of data you know, safely, securely, you know, with, with a low re recovery point um, uh, available at a you know, moment's notice. We're doing software updates, operating system updates. On some of our platforms, we're releasing uh, three out of four weeks. So not only are we getting code out the door, but we're also sometimes scaling the uh, architectural uh, solutions that we have. I only have people who understand Linux or Windows or VMware or NetSec, et cetera, so well. And so being able to partner with, with someone like Rackspace where I can phone them up and then, you know, within minutes be on the phone with an expert in, in one of those areas that has access and can understand my infrastructure and can swiftly take action for that infrastructure, it really just exponentially expands the capabilities of my team. Uptime is absolutely core to SaaS, you know, and cloud. I mean, if we're not up, you know, our customers are mad that, you know, we're not, we're not effectively making money. And uh, so, yeah, we, we need to be up as much as possible. When we do an acquisition or we gain a new infrastructure, generally it's not a matter of if we'll move to that infrastructure to Rackspace or if we'll consolidate that, it's just a matter of when. The biggest differentiator for us has been the service level that Rackspace provides. So my interaction with dealing with incredibly large data center partners that um, are out there is sometimes the service is just non-existent. So we'll have a critical issue, we'll open up a, a high priority ticket, and then our we won't get a call for a day. Whereas Rackspace, I mean, service is just such, such a key differentiator. So please welcome Nick Turner, Recruit. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I'm the director of IT operations with Accruent. I've uh, been with uh, Accruent over the last four years. Uh, anniversary is actually this last Saturday. Um, we're a software company, as I mentioned. We were founded in 1995. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas. Uh, we have around 500 employees right now. And uh, the software that we make is in the IWMS space. So it's uh, for integrated workplace management system. And uh, the solutions are real estate, capital project, facilities, maintenance, and sustainability and energy management. So the software products that we make are generally purpose-built for the industry of the customer that we're making it for. We have uh, over 2,100 uh, customers in, uh, they're all business customers in 56 different countries. And they operate in the retail, higher ed, telecom, commercial property, and, and healthcare space. So while all of these different industries and uh, business customers are, of ours have facilities and real estate, their needs vary uh, quite a bit uh, differently among them. So a as a result of this, the marketplace uh, for solutions uh, in the IWM uh, IWMS space has been very fragmented. So there are a lot of small to medium players that are providing on-premise or, or SaaS solutions for this market, and these solutions are anywhere from 10 to 20 years in age. You know, and as a result, a major part of our strategy has been to grow by acquisition. And we've been in, uh, doing exactly that. So over the last four years that I've been with the company, we've acquired six different companies. And the uh, most recent were SiteFM and Four Rivers, which uh, entered accruent into the uh, healthcare industry. And we've got more on the way. 
you know, these a acquisitions at times add new functionality to our current offerings or provide uh, purpose-built platforms for a new industry that we're looking to move into. So this has resulted in us collecting quite a few data center partnerships. Uh, we ended up with 13 different data center partners as a result over time, and it's really driven the need to consolidate those uh, partnerships where we can um, just to make it manageable. So shortly after any acquisition, we start investigating the technical or financial feasibility and, and timing to drive those uh, consolidation efforts. So our relationship with Rackspace began uh, at the beginning of 2012, shortly after the 360 facility acquisition, which was a company based out of Chicago. With uh, having as many data center partners as Accruent does, Rackspace quickly stood out of the pack just based on the, the service levels alone. The infrastructure that we originally had was, was, like most that we acquire, fairly modest. They were leveraging managed services, um, but at the same time, there was a reliance on physical hardware, a lot of single points of failure, and also the disaster recovery solution that was in place was sort of a bare minimum or barely operational uh, with a different data center provider. So we were able to partner with Rackspace to completely uh, overhaul the uh, infrastructure. We, Basically, everything on this, on this diagram we replaced and uh, put in uh, new uh, capacity, increased performance, uh, improved our disaster recovery solutions by migrating them over, increasing our recovery point and recovery time objectives, and um, overall, uh, just across the board, improved the infrastructure. So the best part of all of this is that we were able to do all of this, but at the same time by keeping our costs the same or by reducing them. So today our infrastructure actually looks quite a bit different. Um, we've been continuously working with Rackspace to iterate on this infrastructure. We've um, done some additional consolidation efforts, added in distributed denial of service mitigation services, and currently this uh, um, diagram is in the process of changing as we've, we've reached a tipping point where we're looking to iterate on our storage tier. So um, we're looking to consolidate those items uh, to gain um, new tiered storage capabilities, increase IOPS, and, uh, and another initiative we're working on is to overhaul and upgrade our disaster recovery solutions. So even though migrating them over to Rackspace has improved our RTO and RPO, we've been able to iterate on that as well and are now in the process of uh, implementing Site Recovery Manager. So with the successes that we've had mi migrating over 360 facility or uh, overhauling the infrastructure, we started migrating the hosted, uh, some other hosted or software as a service platforms that we have. You know, often the infrastructures we inherit through acquisition are in need of investment, sometimes critically so. Uh, they've often opted to partner with a local co-location uh, co data center that's usually within driving distance. And the last time they made any CapEx uh, investment was around five to seven years ago. So the, you know, they got to this decision point and, uh, and they opted to go the co-location route. Uh, they have the hardware support contracts, they beefed up their in-house staff, they're on the hook for managing OS and hypervisor licensing, assuming they're even doing that right. And uh, they're sort of at the whim of uh, large or unpredictable CapEx needs. And so the issues that we've seen present themselves when we sort of swoop in at, at during acquisition is that the hardware is aged, uh, a lot of it's become end of life. And, um, and it's, it's, in, it's sometimes dire need of investment. They also reach limitations regarding cap, uh, capacity. So some of the storage solutions, there's only so many shelves you can add. And uh, so it, it becomes an issue that we have to solve for. Many of the vendors uh, that they have, that they have to uh, call into and deal with, um, they don't have a lot of leverage with. And so they're sort of subject to these annual uplifts and those get uh, bit bigger out of time. And then the skill level and bandwidth of the teams that they, they sort of house in, internally um, has limitations. The staff is uh, often overworked and sort of stuck in this jack of all trades, master of none space. So our strategy has been to leverage managed services, uh, dedicated or cloud, primarily with our production and disaster recovery environments. Occasionally we will do, have our test environments as well. Uh, we do end up with some hardware from our previous co-location uh, infrastructures that we sometimes leverage for our dev and QA environments, but at the same time, we're starting to pivot more of those to leveraging the cloud infrastructure as well. So I mentioned after an acquisition, we'll do a feasibility analysis. So we'll look at the technical or financial feasibility and, and really how that drives timing on when we do a consolidation effort. Um, so we take a lot of tangible or intangible costs into account, licensing, labor, support contracts, uh, any sort of looming CapEx needs that might be we also have to deal with some, some technical feasibility. Because we're dealing with solutions that could be anywhere in t from 10 to 20 years in age, we can have some challenges with the product architecture. 
So there could be a reliance on physical hardware, an ISDN line, server 2003 beta. I mean, you name it, we've seen it as far as technical challenges that we need to overcome to uh, drive these consolidation efforts. But Rackspace has also been partnering with us. When we were originally looking to do data center consolidation efforts, we had to build everything from the ground up, which I'll talk about here in a, in a minute uh, on our site tire migration. Um, but with, uh, within the last year, we've been able to uh, increase the speed of our ability to move these over by being able to port them over and Rackspaceify trademark, uh, the, uh, the VMs that come over and, and uh, become a part of our infrastructure. So I'll go into a little bit of depth on our Cytera migration that we accomplished uh, at the end of last year. And so Cytera is one of our platforms that's predominantly used by the telecom and retail customers uh, of our product. And it was having a, a lot of issues with uh, reliability and performance. So um, after the acquisition we had done, uh, we, we tried to solve for some of these with uh, some piecemeal investments. And we sort of ended up in this game of whack-a-mole, where every single time we'd spend some money or solve one problem over here, we'd end up with another problem over there. And so we were getting to the point of having to make a very key investment on the storage tier, and that's when we started really aggressively hitting that, that uh, inflection point to move the infrastructure over to, over to Rackspace. So we did exactly that. We had 100 big business customers. Some had you know, dedicated T1s, VPNs. They had 40 servers, VM, physical nine large, some, some terabyte in size databases, 70 million files, which equated to 36 terabytes of customer data, and we needed to seamlessly uh, move this over and cut this over. And uh, we did exactly that in about five months. And the uh, results were, were pretty stark as far as our uptime from last year to this year. Um, we're, we're able to achieve far more, far, uh, great stability, and over the last uh, six months, last two quarters, we've been able to maintain 100% uptime of all of our customer environments, which a year ago just did not even seem possible. Another added benefit was because of the new infrastructure that we were putting in place, everything was getting a hardware upgrade, but at the same time, we were able to partner with Rackspace experts on best practices uh, of implementations and removing certain bottlenecks that existed in our previous environment. And so we have a 25-step uh, web transaction that validates the systems up and performing. And just right after the upgrade, we were able to see that um, transaction set go from 18 seconds to complete down to eight. So it was uh, definitely, definitely huge. And again, uh, the, the decision point we were at, we were able to do this for uh, at less cost than it, where we should just put that SAN solution in, and solve a lot of our problems across the board. So the other added benefit that we've seen with partnering with, with Rackspace is now we have experts a phone call away. So if my team needs uh, an expert in, in Linux or operating system, Microsoft, database technologies, NetSec, we can just pick up the phone call and, and, and be able to speak with, with, uh, with an expert in the field. Prior, when we would have an issue, we'd be having to call one vendor, then another, and another, and then never the two ain't shall meet. But we've been able to partner with them to solve our issues, but also to architect some new solutions with us. So sometimes, you know, one of the benefits of being in Austin is we're a short drive away from Rackspace HQ, so we can drive down there, they drive to us, or sometimes we'll collaborate virtually and whiteboard out new architectural solutions for iterating on our existing platform or setting up new footprints. So that's been great. And then as it relates to the Cytera migration, I mean, two major things we were able to solve right out of the gate was we had a very labor-intensive database refresh process. And so in partnering with Rackspace Oracle DBAs, they were able to automate this uh, service for us. So rather than your regular break-fix type relationship uh, with them, they were able to identify ways to optimize and improve and increase the capabilities and scale of our refresh process when we were refreshing our non-production databases. Additionally, in the, in the uptime chart I just showed, there was some, a little bit of volatility right after we moved over to Rackspace, and that was related to our data warehousing process for BI. And the ETL process was having some issues. We had completed an Oracle upgrade earlier that year and saw some volatility in that, um, that we've been partnering with Oracle to solve, but we're not able to uh, accomplish. So shortly after we migrate, we start working with uh, Oracle DBAs at Rackspace, and they identified, even though it wasn't clearly correlated, the problem we were having to a patch that needed to be done, they identified it a patch we needed to put in, popped it in, and it solved our problem. And I could probably keep going on and on in this regard. And the last thing I do want to touch on is the uh, relationship with NetSec. So because we're dealing with a lot of business customers, we have to establish secure connectivity. And the more secure the connectivity is, the more challenging it can be to uh, establish. And so we're able to, again, phone up Rackspace NetSec experts, get them on the horn, 
and they'll sit on with us for literally hours just to, just to get uh, everything uh, up and running for our customers. So with all the segmentation that we have within our, within our infrastructure um, for our different platforms or hosted uh, platforms that we've, we've migrated over, we also have within some of our platforms customers that do require some a fair amount of, of isolation. And so this is uh, pre prevalent in our Cytera application where we're dealing with large telecom providers that want to uh, have some sort of degree of isolation It's important to them as a business. So we're able to do that and then at the same time through the Rackspace portal, even when it comes to managing our virtual machines, be able to do that you know, from sort of a single pane of glass, if you will. So we can see all the hundreds of different VMs that we have, order new ones, clone them, turn them off and on. Uh, we also are able to leverage the performance monitoring a fair amount uh, with just within the portal alone and be able to click through um, all hundreds of our VMs and physical servers which gives us some visibility into uh, performance that's currently going on, but also some historical trends. Uh, so as we start looking at demand and capacity planning, uh, this, is a, this is a great tool for us. And while the primary thing Rackspace has been solving for us has been the data center consolidation and migration efforts, we're also building out a newer platform. And so it's important for us that in, in the in platforms that we're building out that they need to be able to be elastic um, applications and, and be able to scale or burst and, and have a data center partner that has solutions with in DevOps and, and OpenStack cloud technologies and, and big data. So you know, as we're building our DevOps solutions for automated deployments and performance monitoring, it's important that the solutions we're building feed into the uh, solutions that our data center partner has and it's also important that the uh, data center partner that we have is not only helping us solve the problems we have today, but it's positioned to help us solve the problems we're going to have tomorrow. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Yep. All right. So uh, that's a great um, morning that we had. We covered a lot of ground this morning. This afternoon, we're going to focus in a couple of different areas, digital, e-commerce, Private cloud is a big topic for the afternoon. Great brands including Razorfish, Kendra Scott, Notre Dame is going to be here. And we're going to be talking about e-commerce and private cloud across those different companies. So please be sure to come back after lunch and hear the stories. Lunch is now. Lunch is on the sixth floor, which is up the first set of stairs across uh, the way and then up another set of stairs. So the sixth floor, uh, that's going to be right now. The solutions pavilion is also open, so be sure to check that out. Start making your way back here at a quarter after. We're going to start up at 120, right here at 120. Thank you.